That's right. Student debt in the US is now bigger than debt from credit cards and auto loans and is second only to mortgages. It is also about priorities because <laughs> universities have shown no need and no move to reduce costs. They act like it's not their problem. It's the government's problem. It's the family's problem. Once in one year, the price of tuition went up 7%. 7%? Yeah. What goes up 7% in one year? In 1975, tuition prices averaged $7,800 per semester. In 2015, this is now almost tripled to $19,500. You have to ask yourself, is it worth all the money? Absolutely not. Um, we take classes, bullshit classes that we have to spend money on, like gym classes. I have to pay about $900 this one or to just take an uh, online gym class, which makes no sense. This is costing you a lot of money. You want to get maximum experience for the price that you're paying for this degree. Um, I would say I'm in pretty deep at this point. It's probably going to take me a while to pay it off once I graduate. I think schooling is worth it for the networking and the job potential and the fact that a degree is becoming more and more required. That old argument, you need a degree to get a job. According to the NCES in 2014, the numbers are a lot closer than you would think. For only a high school graduate, you have about a 65% chance of getting a job. If you have an associate's, you have about a 66% chance of getting a job. A bachelor's degree coming in with 72% and a master's with 74%. Not a huge amount of difference, if you ask me. The best investment I could make with the money that I, that I was going to spend throughout my life was to get my PhD, because once you have that degree, you kind of have unlimited earning potential. You know, it's really up to you. You have the highest degree. Bachelor's degrees are a little different, because a lot of people have bachelor's degrees. It's pretty, can you come watered down a lot of degrees? But it's becoming more obsolete because of the amount of enrollment that is happening in colleges and on top of that, it's we're taking courses that aren't don't that don't specifically pertain to our major, and we're paying for those courses, but they're not really they're not helping us out as in the field that we're going into. With technology increasing at a rapid rate, how is our current system keeping up with it? Um, Bloomsburg specifically, no. Uh, I'm an IT major. Um, I I need like specific software to do my homework and like do my work and whatnot and I literally have there's only two rooms in the whole university that have the software downloaded to a computer. And they tell us in classrooms we can't use our cell phones and they try and pull in the real world and that type of stuff. I could pull out my cell phone, I could find anything I want to know with this. And that's the, the greatest thing I think about online learning is you can do it anywhere. You can take it with you. You don't have to sit in Dr. Golson's 8 a.m. class half awake or struggling to be awake. But for me personally, uh, I, I hopped into the internet very, very early as a young age and found forums and, and YouTube came out, you know, to teach myself like things I wanted to do. I'm starting to see a trend towards more and more students migrating towards online learning. Why do I think I'm seeing that? I'm seeing that because students like the flexibility. Maybe you don't do well at a 9 o'clock classroom, but you do well at 6 p.m. That's your, your best time of the day. 6 p.m. is when you're awake, you're alert, and you're ready to learn. Well, why can't you take a class at 6 p.m.? And it doesn't have to be in the classroom. And not only can you do it at 6 p.m., you can do it at 2 a.m. You can do it whenever you're awake, whenever you're ready to learn. And that's when learning takes place. Learning doesn't always just take place in the classroom. It doesn't take place in the real world. We'll call it the real world when you're out getting a job. You never know when learning is going to take place. With tuition increasing and student debt at an all-time high and technology staggering to keep up in the classroom, are we really getting our money's worth? And if so, are we really getting educated?